Somebody call a doctor because bad medicine is back. That's the Appleton Oak. This is the answer. I'm Mason Quinn. Guys, tonight we got a little special treat, a little extra, if you will. This is the Harry Potter 20th anniversary Regresso a Hogwarts. I hope I said that right. <laughs> hey, it's never failed to be corrected before on this awesome series. So now we're diving into the 20th anniversary. So we, we got babied by it. Remember, we got to watch the films right like in the One span of a another. month and a half. We were able to watch all eight of them. And now we get to see the 20th anniversary, you know, yeah. special on it the following week so look at us just lucking out right now yeah a lot of you in the comments really uh, requested this of us said it would be really good to get some kind of inside info on uh, harry potter and stuff we might have missed so we're gonna check it out feeling pretty sentimental actually about all this you know we watched them grow up in front of our eyes over the course of the past few months and of course um this particular uh, um uh, you know you know anniversary being 20 years after the first one but still 10 years after the last one yeah. so it had been a long time since um i think everybody that they got together for this had been together of course for certain events and things like that i'm sure and even just being friends the cast had been together in in some form or another but uh, i'm really excited for this one but like i said it seems like the culmination <laughs> of like yeah. this long yeah. journey getting the band back together and i'm yeah. really excited to hear the stories and the behind the scenes but uh you know we still have more uh more potter universe that's uh, right it's not come, done yet uh, coming up so we're gonna do this one uh then we're gonna do our round table discussion where the three of us really dive into the um, the series as a whole, how we felt about it, our big takeaways. But then we're going to watch the uh, the three prequels, yep. uh, if you will, from the Potter universe as well. Not necessarily right away, but those will be coming much sooner than later. So I'm just excited for this one. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Well, once again, let's go. Kind of wondering what the vibe is gonna be yeah. you know if it's gonna have kind of a light comedic vibe or no this is fun already yeah, yeah. oh it's our boy hagrid hey, hey. <laughs> long bottom <laughs> so somebody in the comments was saying that they had to put him in a fat suit for uh they had to put long bottom in a fat suit for a couple of the uh movies or maybe all of them he matured um yeah. quite a bit throughout the course of these films Ah, nine and three quarters. Nine and three quarters. <laughs> it's Weasley's old man. Oh my God! This uh, is awesome. Tom so Fallon, far. Gary yeah, Oldman, Ginny Weasley. Hey. Oh, that was Luna. Okay, we can. Yeah, we can like her now. <laughs> now. <laughs> we don't have to. <laughs> We're all like, uh -huh. wait a minute, is uh. No, oh God, the the lady from Order oh. of the Phoenix, Umbridge. Umbridge, she might have. I don't know if we can forget. Yeah, that. I don't know if she's yeah. still with us. They purposely didn't put her back. <laughs> they knew everybody would be so angry with her. Yeah, I remember somebody else dropped in the comments <laughs> that <laughs> Malfoy, <laughs> that oh Umbridge, goodness. that Stephen King said Umbridge was like the best villain he had ever seen. Oh yeah, commenting on it. Guys, we really learned a lot wow. from all your comments um, and can't even begin to express how much we appreciate all the interaction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah. I'm, supposed, I'm supposed to just forget everything? <laughs> yeah. Look, this might have been 10 years for the people who watched uh, Deadly Hallows yeah. Part 2, <laughs> but it's been a couple weeks <laughs> for us. Sure. These wounds are still fresh. Yeah. Potter Ooh, wasn't in the preview. <laughs> uh, oh, you know he'd get the big yeah. intro. Yeah. I'm kind of digging how they're yeah. doing this. Oh, cool. Oh, they, so you. it's the first two. Yeah. Right. Last time we were here, you were shorter. I'm just, <laughs> just very, very slightly. That's kind of you say. <laughs> but how did you end up doing Harry Potter? I ended up doing it because my daughter, Eleanor, convinced me to read the books after I refused three times. <laughs> <laughs> when the books came out, the cues. I remember seeing yeah. this, man. It was insanity. <laughs> So I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess that uh, 
Universal, you can go to the actual like sets yeah. at Universal Studios in Florida. My dad used to do all the voices, and my brother and I just became obsessed. Oh, that's so cool. Her dad did the voices from the characters. Yeah. We finished a chapter to be like, one more, one more, please, just one more, please, 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 one more, one more, one more, one more. A friend of mine at school had the first two, and I went for a sleepover at his house. And he said, well, Philosopher's Stone's there on the bookshelf. That's what we did. <laughs> we just both sat there in silence in reading Chamber of Secrets, reading <laughs> Philosopher's Stone. And that was it, really. I never looked back. At the time of reading, <laughs> 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 there aren't many twins in literature. The Chamber of Secrets was the first book that I sort of genuinely stayed up at night reading. Oh, that's cool. All the actors were so into it. So they seemingly walked away. And of course, while there's still one gentleman. Oh, he was room, hired immediately when they, saw him. when they saw him. When he had his hair. Asked me. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I think he even said, it's a mic, duh. Not like, like they're filming us. This is just like a trick. Like as if I'd done it before, really. <laughs> I remember it because it was Emma. <laughs> <laughs> he was a jerk the whole time. I always knew that I was going for Hermione. We couldn't, we just couldn't find Harry. I was in <laughs> my hotel room in London one night watching the BBC version of David Copperfield. Immediately a light bulb went off in my head and I said, this is Harry Potter. This is the oh, kid we've been looking wow. for for months. So I asked the casting director, I said, we've got to get him in here for an audition. She said, it's never going to happen. His parents do not want him involved in this world. They don't want him to take what? this role. I think the deal was to sign on for like wow. four or seven films and they would be filmed in LA. So my mom and dad were like, no, that's like a huge disruption to his life. David being the great producer that he is, convinced Dan's father to bring Dan in for an audition. And that's basically when we got our Harry Potter. That's a dragon egg. What is it? That's what that is. What is that? Dragon egg. And <laughs> <laughs> Ash. I never thought so you can hear. I took it out first time. I was <laughs> like, I'm having fun watching this. Life. Shut up. <laughs> comes around the corner any second now. At least <laughs> I knew it. Here it is. Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Sorcerer's Stone. The, the what? what? <laughs> and honestly, don't you two read? Uh, <laughs> like perfect. Jeez. Oh, Shut up. <laughs> it feels like no time has passed and loads of time has passed Ooh. simultaneously. It doesn't feel like much time has passed. It doesn't feel like we've kind of earned a reunion yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've had kidney stones and a baby. So tired, <laughs> I Our first audition, the, the day we all met, oh I think God, for yeah. the first time, there was like me walking out of my dressing room and seeing like another like young brown haired boy going the other way. I never saw his face, but I was like, you are clearly another Harry that is being tested <laughs> out today. And they were like yeah, testing yeah, yeah. us with various different configurations of Ron, Harry and Hermione. I do remember that when it was the three of us, something felt different right, and, yeah, and like yeah. right and easy. I do remember hmm. the click. We'd been out of the studios. They told us we got the parts and they were like, cool. So we're announcing you've got the parts. There is now going to be a lot of media outside your house, so you can't go oh, home. I suppose, yeah. Oh, it sort of turned things Whoa. upside Oh my down. God. I don't know, I've never had anything happen to me like this before. Well, Emma was arguably the smartest person on the set. <laughs> <laughs> Rupert was Ron, and Dan Hannah was Harry. How do you feel about becoming famous? Be cool. <laughs> Well, on the first film, I was dying the entire time. But I just, I, I always believe you cannot bring that kind of anxiety. I want everyone to feel comfortable. I want everyone you know, to feel comfortable. It's funny like when it's they show child actors, like in other things, they're always like mini adults. They're yeah. always like super mature and like very on the level. Yeah. I remember seeing some behind the scenes of Walking Dead where they showed some of the younger actors. We were very much just like kids being kids on a set. Mm. I My reviving memory from the first. From Philosopher's Stone, is I just learned how to play slam. So slaps. much oh, hand slaps. slaps. Yeah. With like both, all of us, like red, like yes. red I mean, wall hands. Like, you can't well. show up like that. Oh. <laughs> 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 Do I mean, that was trapped. I don't know. Your nose. <laughs> 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 They couldn't contain their excitement long enough to focus on an entire scene. It's got, it's got. <laughs> Man, I suppose you got to be like a coach too, you know? It's not easy because it takes a tremendous amount of patience. Yeah. <laughs> with kids. With kids as hyperactive and as excitable as we all were. <laughs> well, I believe it. <laughs>
yeah. Columbus basically just let us be yeah, kids. True. I never true. recall feeling like we're working. No. But that's so important, isn't it, that we had that? Yeah. That's why it feels that way when you watch That's it. really it interesting like... is that the director had him on the set and kept that vibe the whole time that they were kids. Yeah. That was no stranger I had with that in the village. It was Snape. He knows how to get past Fluffy. Good afternoon. Loyalty of the acting world. Just grow up around and hear, hear them interact and hear the quickness true. of people. Like Robbie Coltrane. He was such a kid, like so immature, just so much fun. I tried absolutely everything. I've tried screams, <laughs> I've tried jellies, I tried shaving. Every moment I woke up as like, my husband is threatening to leave me. <laughs> and if he really loved me, he wouldn't mind a little facial hair, I'm sure. But it's very, very difficult. <laughs> I keep thinking about that scene where I get called a mudblood. Yes. And you were so sweet with me that day. Because yeah. it was like my first, like, you know, big piece of acting. This was heavy. Yeah. Call me a mudblood. What's a mudblood? <laughs> Ron, that's right, Ron He's was. The slugs. The three of you have become such great actors. Being on that set, you felt like you actually entered the world. Yeah. With all of Stuart Craig's sets. Yeah. The attention to detail was phenomenal. Yeah, I would imagine the sets make it easy to slip into that role. Into the, yeah. I had a tremendous amount of creative freedom, so we could build this world from the ground up. Some of the sets on Potter were overwhelming to me. One of my favorite moments on set ever was the moment when all the floating candles started burning through the ropes that tied them to the ceiling and started <laughs> falling around the great hall. Hundreds of real candles that were really lit on the fishing line <laughs> yeah. from the ceiling. Footage. It's easy enough to understand. Each team has seven players, three chasers, two beaters, one keeper, and the seeker. So Joe Rowling basically did a rule book for us, a Quidditch rule book. Wow. Huh. I always wanted to tell you this, but there was a moment on day two, maybe, or three, the camera pushes into you and you say, I'm, we're not going home, not really. Feels strange to be going home, doesn't it? I'm not going home, not really. I got tears, I still get tears in my eyes thinking about it. I thought, this guy, this kid is an amazing actor. Oh, and it was that moment that kind of opened up the whole world for us. And the first film is very storybook, very inviting. It's yeah, like, it's lovely and welcome, welcome to Hogwarts, Hogwarts yeah. until you get to the end of the movie. And why man, I melt a man's face. <laughs> 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 the thing about the Burroughs I remember is that it changed all the time. It sort of expanded and contracted. One minute there was a huge fireplace with flu powder and, and then there was just, and then it got it smaller. <laughs> I feel like being a Weasley is the best part of being a Harry Gosh, she looks like she's like six feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> Julie Waters and Mark Williams, they were like my second family. Dumbledore, Dumbledore, <laughs> Dumbledore must know you're here, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was hard for him too. Is it working? <laughs> <laughs> this is so exciting. Yeah. It's the first time I've been back since Asker. We did. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Draco, play nicely. This guy. <laughs> such a I great villain. I like this guy. I was first aware of Harry Potter because everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't to, be hate the guy. The point of him being in the story to me was to explain why Draco was such a horrible, heartless, sadistic bully at school. He's a product of his parents. If Hagrid was your first influence, chances are you're going to be. Isn't he beautiful? <laughs> oh, <laughs> bless him. Look, he knows he's mummy. Look, that is a psychopath wielding a... <laughs> <laughs> he's probably not going to be the friendliest geezer. The very first scene that I shot was actually cut. It was on the deleted scenes. Draco touched something and I used this cane and I went... Don't touch anything, Draco. But I didn't know how sharp the teeth were. Oh. I went right into little Tom's hands, eyes welled with tears. And I went, Tom, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize how sharp they were and how heavy it was. And he went, no, no, it's all right. It's good for the scene. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> God, now I feel bad. I hated, I hated him so bad in these movies. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> Such an honor it is. A real take. And he goes, thank you, Lucy, for all that. Swing my leg out. Chris goes, cut. Can we clean the floor where Jason slipped, please? And I said, no, I, I didn't slip. I kicked Dobby down the stairs. <laughs> and I just thought, this is going to be ridiculously good fun. <laughs> <laughs> Master has presented Dobby with clothes. 
So you and I had one of our greatest laughs together yes. with Richard Harris, and we had a animatronic version of yeah. Fox the Phoenix. Richard <laughs> came in and looked at the Phoenix and yeah. said, wow, they train these animals marvelously. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they think creatures, Felix. We never told him. No, we never told him. <laughs> <laughs> Always felt guilty about leaving. I really did. Oh, no. When I said goodbye to you guys, I was like, I, I can't believe I'm leaving these guys. I don't think you, honestly, I don't think you ever, ever get enough credit for like what you achieved on those first two and with all of us. And so thank you so much. It's for that. been the greatest experience of my life. Yeah, I suppose if those two didn't hit, yeah. who knows where it would have gone. Coming of age. Uh, that's, you know, I, I kept coming back to that. I'm so glad they put that in there. There we go, Gary Oldman. Uh, good man. Thank you for coming. You know, he's such a chameleon in everything he mm. does. I have no idea, like, how old or what he really looks like, you know? The themes of Don't Judge a Book by its Cover. Don't Judge a Book by its Cover. How many times is that replayed throughout the course of this movie? Can I ask you, when we, were you first approached to be serious? I was aware of Harry Potter, but it, it was very much a sort of kids thing. Mm. People were telling me to read the books, and, the, and I have kids, so it was going to be in my universe somewhere. And then they were taking a slightly darker approach, and yeah. the book was interesting. I met Alfonso, and I think at the time he was the main attraction. In the first two, Harry is still a child. There is a, a, a greater optimism around the tone itself. Nevertheless, when he turns 13, there's a, a big cloud that overshadows everything around Harry. When was Azkaban, how old were you? 14. Really, yeah. when we first met? Yeah. I think I had a natural sort of paternal thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to kill me, Harry? Let's kill him! Wait! I did my waiting! 12 years of it! In Azkaban! I have never done a scene with such an amazing cast in my life. I love it. I I have such a great memory of it. I always loved the character of Sirius. I love the relationship Harry and Sirius have. He's like this cool uncle, but also older brother figure. Yeah. And He's painted as this villainous guy and then has the switch where you go, oh, he was set up. And he's a good guy. <laughs> and he's so kind and so warm and he's and cool. warm and kind yeah. and he's kind of cool. I wish I'd had the whole picture. You know, we only ever found out book. Yeah, book, book. I don't know whether you were because you not. were Harry Potter. Just Rickman. You had a, Rickman did, that was it. Rickman? He had the inside line. He worked that way. I did. He very <laughs> early said to Joe, he was like, I think oh. I need to know what happened. I do no. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose, because they only had, what, four books out when they started? He wanted to get to know us. He asked us to write an essay in character. You know these characters at this point better than I'm ever going to be able to understand who they are, so you tell me. Of course, Emma writes, like, 12. <laughs> pages like beautifully written rupert didn't deliver anything <laughs> i said rupert where's your assignment he says well uh i thought that ron wouldn't do it <laughs> i mean luckily i thought he kind of saw that it was very in character for 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 me not to have done it rupert is ron emma is just such an effortless actor. Just says so much about the chemistry that they had on scene and how well everything played out, knowing that these young kids, as they're saying, are who these characters yeah. are. Emma is, Hermione, Rupert is, is 100%. 100%. Well, and what an education they got to be around all these A-list oh, actors God, for yeah. years. And I said, no, come on, boys, really, it's a fight. Okay, who wants to fight? Well, of course, I was a tubby 60 year old gent at that, that stage. <laughs> <laughs> and so he dived on me, just went like this. So I did the same to him. I remember gripping him round the waist and trying to fling him about and so forth. And I cracked a couple of ribs. Oh, oh what? what? <laughs> you know, and you shouldn't break the director's <laughs> rib. That is awesome. The amount of. Um, 
like prep and coaching, Emma and I would give each other on like texting to the opposite sex. Like if we, if she was texting a boy or I was texting a girl, I'd be like, she sent me this many kisses back. It, what do I do? This is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hormones flying around. <laughs> <laughs> People went out with each other and broke up, and just like you're doing, the like guy used to do at school. <laughs> that film was probably peak hormone, at least for me. <laughs> it was exactly what you expect, and especially like the fourth film was the one with like uh, the bow batons and the Durmstrangs. So like you had a bunch of like hormonal teenagers, anyway, and then like bring in two massive groups of new people. All of them are like purposefully hot for the film. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, look at that. Stop. Lucky man, lucky man. <laughs> I think I was in the hair and makeup chair and someone said something along the lines of, yeah, she had a crush on you. I used to come in every day and look for his number on the call sheet, it was number seven. an extra exciting day. He was three years above me. And so for him, he was like, you're like my little sister. I was became very protective over her. Yeah, I've always had a soft spot for, for her. Um, and that continues to the day. <laughs> what a tension with this, <laughs> this reunion here. Yeah. Nothing has ever, 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 ever happened romantically with us. We just love each other. That's all I can say about that. Oh boy. Lies! <laughs> Lies! <laughs> Lies! <laughs> ah, vengeance! My sister has children who are then <laughs> around 10, 11, 12. I said, Martha, I don't know about this Harry Potter thing, Voldemort. What's that? What? <laughs> You're being asked to play Voldemort? <laughs> You've got to do it! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it was when I was shown some drawing design ideas for the look. I wasn't expecting that. And oh, I thought, oh wow, wow. That's a strong look. God, this guy is so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was the voice, husky, something that I suppose I, a sort of whispering voice, uh, breath on breath. <laughs> Come to die. Oh my oh. God. God, he's so yeah. good. Jeez. He does have a nose. Spoiler alert. And he was covered in stickers. So he was slightly less intimidating uh, than on screen. It took about three hours in makeup. Kill the stag! Oh, oh, God. God. Doesn't get any easier. This is my boy! It's my boy! It's such a massive scene because it is also the first time Harry sort of feels that kind of death of, of somebody young close to him. That's a scene I remember really distinctly going, like, oh, this is, yes, these are kids' films. My God, there's some challenging stuff in there. He's back! The moment of Cedric Diggory's death is the moment when the series comes of age. And See? now the children have left childhood and are going to have to confront the perils of adulthood. And it all comes from that moment of death. They're all still here. They're really oh. still here. I mean, has anyone fed them? This is sad. No, read it out. It's so nice to see you. Dear HBC, yeah. it was a pleasure <laughs> being your co-star and coaster. Wow. <laughs> What a what a clever pun! <laughs> In the sense that I always up ended up holding your coffee. I do love you. Then what does it say? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! You can share. Oh, I can. We can share this now. I said I do love you, and I just wish I'd been born ten years earlier. I might oh, have been in with a chance. It's all right now. <laughs> Lots of love and thanks for being cool. Isn't it nice? No, I shall always treasure that. <laughs> Thank you. That is in my toilet, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> By the time we get to Order the Phoenix, oh, the world oh, is becoming more political, and I felt we needed a director oh, in an entertainment oh, way. David Yates works so well with actors. I find it so curious that they switch directors as much as they yeah. do in these series. But the movies had to feel different, so it made sense. It does make, yeah. I wonder if for the reunion purposes they're downplaying this a little bit but i wonder if directors left or were fired for certain things in the movie or if oh. they really just well, wanted this guy did the rest of them so he did all of them then, he, huh? he did F the final from here on yeah, out it looks like he did the final four emma is 
Uh, not sure she wants to come back. Oh no! <sighs> what? I can see that at times I was lonely. Sword of the Phoenix. Was when things started getting spicy for all of us. Mm. But you were considering pulling out? I never really spoken to you about this. I think I was scared. Yeah. I don't know if, if you ever felt like it got to a tipping point oh, when absolutely. you were like... No, I had moments like that kind of all the way through. I also had kind of similar feelings to Emma kind of contemplating what life would be like if I called it a day. But um, I mean, we never really spoke about it. I, I guess we were just kind of going through it. It's like the Beatles are yeah. down. Yeah. They're just... The fame thing had finally hit home in a big way. They, they kind of grew up alongside us and helped them with some really difficult things in their lives and I'm just very proud to, to be a part of something that means so much to so many. That's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you're not kidding. <laughs> I used to meet J.K. Rowling since I was about 11 years old to say thank you to her, to say I would find life a bit hopeless without Harry Potter. Luckily for me, she read the letter and responded to it. Wow. Holy cow. Seriously? She was out there responding to people's letters. Wow. That's crazy. That's my ticket. Off we go. No experience. Oh, my God. Just show up. I remember Dan very vividly. It was on my screen test. Mistletoe. I remember him talking to me. And I kept forgetting that I have to talk back to him because I'm so used to watching him on a screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just kind of be like, and I kind of think that contributed to the whole Luna Lovegood vibe. Yeah, that fit her so well. Everyone on this set has known you for about six or seven years and they've watched you grow up. And they're now going to just watch you kiss. Cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Did you get anything? Because I stole quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, she had the teeth. Because <laughs> I was definitely trying to steal my wand. And I yeah. worry that if I had, I probably would have lost it by now somewhere. You know they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> the child who hasn't received affection, the enabling love of the parent or the adult, can develop this anger and hatred at the world. What Draco's journey is, is to do with whether he is or isn't trying to please his father. I remember David Yates uh, saying, if we can get just 1%, of empathy or sympathy for him, <laughs> we'll have done our job. Absolutely, yeah, that yeah. happened big time. Have had a cut of Do not pity the dead, Harry. Pity the living, and above all, all those who live without love. Richard Harris was such a special, warm person. Oh, Richard was classic. Probably one of the funniest men I've ever met. He was brutally hilarious. He waves. <laughs> His passing was the one that has affected me most. Because I wondered when I'd be seeing you, Mr. Potter. You know, I'll be very, very old one day saying, like, I knew that absolute legend. The Dark Lord himself forbade me to speak of this. Helen McCrory played my wife. I just met the best actress I've ever seen in my life. She had taught me a lot. See, I can't even say it. <laughs> she had this ability, yeah, just to sort of to show such uh, empathy in our eyes. I can teach you how to bewitch the mind. Alan Rickman never talked to me like I was a child. Uh, Alan was a very dear friend. We had that final scene, his final scene. I was a little intimidated by him, his precision, his expert delivery of lines. Wow. <laughs> even he was intimidated by him. Yeah. No one else can really quite understand what we experience. It's a very unique thing. I think David Yates used to describe us as astronauts because <laughs> no one else has really experienced this on this no, scale. No, that's, that's, you know, 100% right on that. I think even the people who grew up watching it, you know? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I remember you and I, Emma, becoming incredibly competitive. Ridiculously competitive. About who yeah. was going to run faster. I feel like Rupert was always like a little bit too like, you run. guys do what you like. This is like, you do your thing. For me, running is a stone. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, us kissing was oh, yeah? the most horrifying thing either oh. of us have yeah. ever had to go through. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be like uh, it was kind of nice for me. It was just built up so much for the whole series. I mean, eight films. <laughs> the best thing they kissed, and then that's my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right away. They that better was... show that scene. They uh, have to. 
It was meant to be like this like dramatic make out because you and I just kept corpsing and I was yeah. just really scared. Oh, we come on, yeah, we gotta see this. We gotta see this. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of think I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> it just felt wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Because Dan, Rupert, and I are so much sibling. I remember the scene when you were like, no, guys, I'm the one who has to go on my own kind of thing on this this one. I knew I was saying goodbye to the series. Mm. I knew I was saying goodbye to you. Oh, heavy. I owe so much to Neville as a character. I was very, very shy. I, wouldn't, I would never speak up in class. I wouldn't put my hand up for anything because I, I very much was him. He ended up being the man. Confirmed. <laughs> Oh, every time. God, still love it. Mm. It's a big old uppercut <laughs> yeah. swing. We were shooting in cold months and the skies were grey. My forearm got so tight because this thing was running current in me. So you had to push it back at him. Physical challenge of making the films. There was that small pressure of thinking, you're the one who's going to finish this. Uh, oh. That's just a, a teeny weeny bit. Resonate, it has to deliver. Rather not be seen like this? Why? Because he doesn't like the clip in his head. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud to have been part of them. I think towards the end, it was kind of a weird time, yeah. especially kind of finishing. I feel like I lost track of who I was and who the character was. I didn't really know ended or began. Weird yeah. things, even my name didn't feel like my name. Yeah. I felt like I only really knew how to do one thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a really crazy point. Wow. It's almost like we did the most extreme form of method acting. It feels like you're like a pillar of my life. We watched each other grow up. We grew up together. We're family. We will always be part of each other's life. Oh, it's so nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not going to pull a Han Solo and say, I know, is she? <laughs> <laughs> That's a friend. On that last day, I just lost it. I remember all of us just holding each other. It's so ingrained in me as well, like, I measure my life with these movies. <laughs> I don't think I fully appreciated the reach that these films had. These are the only films my dad and I watch together. Like, we can't talk about anything else. And, like, we watch Harry Potter together, and that's been our thing. Uh, and it's an epic journey that uh, every child goes on. Stay close to me. Until the end. I have found it an extraordinary world to be involved with. Most of the fans, like, that come up and say hello to me now weren't even born when we made the film. Quickly makes you feel slightly older and very grateful that it's being passed down. I get to be part of a world that people love so much and makes people happy. Ten years of my life, my, my children have grown up during it, of course. The legacy of the movies is that my children's generation will show them to their children. So you could be watching it in 50 years' time. Easy. I'll not be here, sadly, but, <laughs> but Haggard will. Yes. It was a great time. It really was. It was... It was amazing. The crew on these films were unbelievable. Yeah, no kidding. That's a lot of people. I was probably just like a third of yeah, them to make that. As a person and an actor, I feel so lucky to be where I am, but none of it is possible without this. It was it was very <laughs> it was a very good ten years. <laughs> <laughs> a part yeah that i was talking about all right there it was wow. the behind the scenes of everything you ever wanted to know about harry potter I, wow that was yeah. just awesome that yeah. was just awesome um just seeing everything behind the scenes the like some of their auditions everything that entails it was just amazing to me uh what it, like I yeah you have some yeah I mean the you want to I guess a couple of things that really hit me that that Daniel Radcliffe said and and uh, and some of the others was that they grew up doing this and they weren't really sure who they were because they had been playing these these characters for so long and been so immersed in this world like I can see where you'd be like 
like Daniel Radcliffe said, oh, wait, what do I like to do for fun? What do, you know, what, what do I like to have a good time doing? So, um, you know, that was something to really kind of wrap your head around. And, and something that Emma Watson talked about was the impact that these films and these books have had with people. I mean, what an amazing amount of pressure to have to deal with, to know that you're making people like have these wonderful experiences and enjoying all this stuff. And you've got to be the one to deliver on screen and, you know, that was incredible. And then, of course, our old our old pal Rupert, you know, I feel like he got the short end of the stick a little bit on the kiss, the way he was kind of describing that. He's like, terrible. oh, it was great for me. What are you talking about? Yeah. But no, and, and you always the, describe it as a horror show. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing I liked how they talked about, like, yeah, this was, and he specifically said this was like 10 years of his life that was super amazing. And that, that's like how he judges everything that he did. Uh, during that time period of, like you said, when did you get your license? Oh, you know, when I was filming this or that, you know? So that was just super cool in the behind the scenes. And, of course, I thought they did a very, very tasteful job of everyone that was lost, uh, yeah. you know, since the movies were made. It was awesome seeing those people again. I mean, you know, what a a learning experience for all these actors to be with some of arguably the greatest actors in the world it's, it's, in these movies. Like, oh yeah, you're going to hang out. You're going to work with these guys for, for 10 years. And if you somehow don't become a great actor, there must be something wrong with you. Cause you're working with the best. Well, like they touched on the scene with Gary Oldman where they're like watching a tennis match, just watching yeah. the sun. Just, he had Alan Rickman, every movie there to just do it, you know, just to watch a professional at work mm-hmm. and do it the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. I mean, incredible. we saw like how they let them have more, fun in the beginning and then you know they got more and more serious yeah so that was amazing to see i still can't get past the auditions how young they looked (laughs) but then all the fun that they were still having despite towards the end it's being a serious serious film Mm -hmm. and they're still having fun between takes yeah were they able to turn that switch yeah and like and again the only other challenge i could really think of that they had was uh like you kind of talked about a little bit was with the different directors kind of like parachuting in to each movie where they had to kind of feel like all right you guys kind of know what you're doing explain the characters to me a little bit and then the director has to pick it up and it probably helped having the same director for the last was it four i think it said the last four but he at least did the last two yeah for sure so like he had to do seven part one and part two so like he had he had the biggest response responsibility yeah, I think, had to do the big finish movies. you know but yeah i mean overall i thought this was outstanding this was something that was really fun to watch if if you kind of got your your harry potter fix going on but you don't necessarily have the time to dedicate to all the movies i think this is something you could pop in kind of relive all those memories and kind of get a lot of those feelings and enjoy it if you're a little short on the time <sighs> you know if you'd have told me a, a few months ago <laughs> that i'd be sitting here um <laughs> watching a, a Harry Potter 20 year reunion and actually getting emotional I would have uh I would have been highly highly doubtful of that yet uh yet <clears throat> yet here I am um you know I've I've talked um you know it's it's weird because we talk about the the uh how the characters evolve and how they mature and it's almost like I feel like I went through that watching these movies um but you know once i started to realize hey maybe this isn't just kids movies and they're coming of age and you start realizing that you're watching these kids grow um i really looked at these movies different and then to hear the actors talking as themselves about you know how important of a time this was in their lives you know and how much it meant to them it was i mean it was really heavy i i don't know that through life you ever have the kind of friends that you have that you grow up with. Oh, hundred percent. Um, yeah, I have, um, you know, I have my friends from when I was a little kid that you grow up with. And I think you, you experience so much in your younger years in life from elementary school to grade school to high school, um, growing with people and aging with people and experiencing so many of the, the, the these major moments in life with people that, you know, when you get into college and you get into adulthood and you get into work friends, I'm certainly not saying that you can't meet friends like that, but I, I just don't believe that you ever have the type of, um, the type of attachment or the type mm-hmm. of experiences in life that you have with childhood friends. Absolutely. And this is a story about that. Um, I liked that they brought up that this has never really been done before. And I, I don't know that it will be again. You have to have 
you, you have to have a series of, yeah, like of, of movies that ages with the kids. And look, we've seen, you know, movies that have, you know, four, five, six, whatever sequels mm-hmm. or parts to it, but they're not aging with these kids. And I think it's, you know, and I, I've discussed this a few times as I started to accept the movies for being quality <laughs> um, <laughs> as, as it started slapping me in the face. But um, what a, what a, just a really neat time it must have been for the kids who were aging with them and growing with them because that's never that's never going to repeat itself again you know i i'm a thousand percent sure that um that uh that i'll be watching these movies with my son although hearing um emma watson talk about how her dad read the different characters now it's like okay well all now I feel. Yeah. Now, I, now <laughs> I feel like I have to read the books yep. to my son first. A short nine hundred pages. <laughs> but, right. But the thing is, is if he wanted to watch the movies now, it would be like, you know, let's say he starts watching them when he's twelve. Oh, well, the, the next one, I can't be like, well, we'll watch it next year. Yeah, you gotta wait. <laughs> you know, wait until next year. So uh, a, a ten or a twelve or even a fifteen-year-old that gets into Harry Potter now, you know. If if you're a dedicated TV or movie binger like you <laughs> like myself, um, you can you know you can bang these out in a matter of uh, a matter of weeks. Or if you had a really, really, you know, just dedicated weekend, you could probably run through all eight movies in a, in a weekend. Which um, we'll be doing. Lo- no. <laughs> so I I don't think that um, God. You know, unless a new series of books. I mean, I'm 42. Yeah, and it's I, the first time I think I've ever seen it. And uh, you know, unless unless somebody comes out with an incredible series like this that they do again, yeah. I don't know that this will ever be replaced. Um, I love that the that the stars of the movie recognize how important these movies were to people going through rough things in their lives, and I love that they touched on like, well. If if they're going through this and they made it through it, then maybe I can too. I love that they talk about the relatability of you know everybody kind of being their own misfit. Maybe they don't fit in. And um, for for as for as interesting as it is hearing the the actors talk about it, um, the one thing that's been really meaningful. <laughs> We do these. Uh, look, look, I'm not. I'm not trying to eat crap on the other work that we do. Yeah. But we we do this. Is this is like our thing? We get together and we do these movie reactions. And I got to be honest with you, none of them are that meaningful. <laughs> yeah. You know. I mean, we we have fun. We want to hear what your comments are. What did you think about the Batman? And what yeah. did you think about Venom? And and we love hearing comments. But I, I, you know, I sit down and I read these comments on Harry Potter and like some of our videos have gotten, you know a thousand comments and so many of them are people saying like this got me through a a tough point in my life and so to hear actors say it is one thing to hear people that are watching our channel um, reflect those sentiments you realize like this is like a real thing and it was it was nice seeing the actors do it um uh i am halfway through re-watching all the movies um i wanted to do that um because i feel like I I openly will admit, and I don't think it's any surprise that I kind of dismissed the first two movies as we were watching them, and I wanted to go back and watch those, and I got a lot more out of those, and so I'm excited for our roundtable discussion. Um, the three of us are going to sit down, talk about all eight movies, things that we liked, things that we didn't like, revelations we had. Um, but it's man, it's been a lot of fun. But like I said, I didn't. Uh, it's weird when a movie like impacts you i love going to the movies it's it's you know i I, you know you 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 have um a getaway from reality and you know you can enjoy them and sometimes you get emotional and movies can be sad but uh these these movies were really really impactful and when you realize that they've had this big of an impact on so many people uh across such a broad age range Mm -hmm. all across the globe it's just a really a really phenomenal thing and something that you really don't see with an entertainment industry. And so I was, like I said, probably a bit overly dramatic. Some of my non bad medicine friends from the world of bodybuilding <laughs> and fitness and all the other things that I do, they sit probably, down and watch it. They'll they would get probably it. be yeah. surprised um, at, at my reaction. Um, but I think if they went through and watched all the movies like we did, yeah. um, they would get it. So um, this reunion 
was phenomenal, and uh, I think I speak yeah, for the rest of us. I love the us. way that they did it overall, the overall aspect of the storytelling and just having them and then having them be on the actual sets. Yeah, that made a big difference. I mean, difference. That, was, that was awesome. I mean, it was – like I've seen like the Friends reunion where they have a crowd and everything, which that's what I was kind of thinking was going to happen, but this actually – blew it out of the water i thought yeah just because it was a lot cooler being on the sets having the round table with the three main stars and then having daniel like talk to like the first two directors and mm -hmm. and gary talking with gary oldman just about how amazing everything was and like just watching his acting and how that helped him with his acting oh. so there was so much to unpack that it was really cool to see how everything went into these movies yeah it's just the thing that fascinates me the most about it i think is how for this moment in time this media this entertainment was just it was just lightning in a bottle and it, it they talked about it it hasn't been seen since it might not be seen again it was Never. the perfect moment at the perfect time and you know like kids were reading books again when they were talking about you know yeah. is is reading dying off are they you know not going to do it anymore and now these kids are just pounding through 900 page books like they're nothing you know when neville told the story about him and his friend had a sleepover and all they did was sit there and read the books they didn't even talk to each other i mean it was just Lightning in a bottle is the only way I can just, describe just it. Just the the spectacle of how big the premieres got time, mm -hmm. like with each movie. I would, I would love if they had somewhere a side by side. I mean, maybe they do on the interwebs somewhere where they have the side by side with how big each premiere was. Yeah. You know, whether in L.A. or over in. Yeah, and you premiere. can tell that you know Emma. Just real quick, Emma Watson did touch on the pressure she was under and thought about leaving it. And I I don't remember which movie it was because you know when you watch them so quick back to back. At least for me, they maybe run together a little bit but i remember there was one in particular where she wasn't really in it a whole lot i don't remember what it was but i wonder if that's when she was going through kind of you know having a hard time with it or whatever because i remember there was one she wasn't in it very much yeah it's it's hard to yeah. say you know i mean especially going through the the age that she was going through where as a teenager where it's like okay i want to live too and yeah i want to be able to go out and hang out with my friends and the date world and knows have, her. yeah and and she couldn't do that and it's one of the things that i think you know we definitely you know assume like celebrities have like every amazing everything about their lives yeah. but there's there's certainly some some things that we take for granted that celebrities can't do when you reach that level of fame i'm just gonna wrap up my thoughts you know and like i said we're gonna go way into this so i am watching the movies over again i am watching all the fan theories so in our round table that's some of the stuff we're going to yeah. talk about i would like to uh, hop into some of my favorite fan theories um my favorite harry potter quotes just a lot of different stuff um that uh that people also discuss online now about harry potter but the one thing that i will say that i thought was very unique not just about the coming of age um is how and, and this has been a recurring thing for me doing these reviews is just the quality of the lessons that these movies teach and um and 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 the value of these movies and I grew up, you know, um, pretty, pretty, you know, middle class ish, you know, um, and was lucky to have, you know, very, very good parents. So I, you know, there's a lot of things in life and challenges that, um, that I think people have dealt with that I, I haven't dealt with. Um, but I, again, to see people in the comments on our videos, um, talking about, look, I, I went through some really rough times in life. And these movies help me get it through it. I think that's the biggest thing because mm -hmm. you can make eight movies that are exciting and magical and all about the world of wizards and stuff like that. Um, but the the amount of substance that they put in these movies, knowing that like, hey, this is going to get people through hard times. This is going to motivate people, people who feel like they're outcasts or don't know the direction their life is going. Um, there's going to be a lot of value in these movies for that. So I think that's like the best thing as far as like. Yep. You, know, you go back and you look at movies that teach good lessons and there's a lot of movies that teach lessons about how to treat other people and there's movies that are like dedicated to that um but i think this series did a great job of being very entertaining but also of um uh, of, uh, teaching some just phenomenal life lessons um yeah. for everybody for everybody that watches it's not just again and i said this in an earlier movie it's not just for the kids watching this these movies it's for everybody who watches them. And that's the one thing, you know, we've said it must have been really neat for the kids who were aging. It doesn't matter 
if you know i just look we just watched all these over the course of the last few months and i'm just soaking in the lessons so it doesn't matter whether somebody watched them 20 years ago or 10 years or 20 years from now somebody starts watching these movies these life lessons that are completely they transcend generations the lessons about believing in yourself and being good to other people and things like that um you know realizing loved ones are never lost they're always in your heart those aren't lessons that are not going to be relevant in the year 2040 and 2060 and whatever i mean those are lessons that are always relevant for all generations uh, all across the globe and i the fact that you got something out of a movie that was just so meaningful to everyone i think is just i i can't say enough um i'm, I'm excited to the round table um i think it'll it'll be like I'm, I'm i'll be honest with you like watching them get emotional it's hard not to get emotional because you start again thinking about you know some of the friends that you had and the experiences just life at that age is just it's a trip you know yeah and, and i think uh, you know what helps with the depth of it and i think why these movies affected people so much more than other ones is that they were backed by books and of course the books are always going to have that much more detail that much more in depth for people to kind of dive into where i think you know your standard movie maybe doesn't have that ability so you know i think the the fact that they were indeed based off books certainly probably played a, a huge part of that yeah, sure. so, yeah. absolutely couldn't have said it better myself boys so there you have it for the appleton oak that's mason quinn i'm of course the answer Good night, pals, and always.